we will welcome back for the final uh, one last story we're gonna we're gonna say tonight. And again, uh, just a warning for people that are listening and watching this. This is not for everybody. This story. So if you want, you can just shut it off right now um, for the rest of the the shiotoa. Okay. So now this story. I'll tell you the source. It's in the Kavi Yashal chapter sixty nine. That um, he brings down this very very scary story on you know uh, on a certain demon by the name of Machlas. And he says it happened during the year, he says it's a true story that happened in the year, in the Jewish calendar year, 540, 5441 and 5442. It was in a city of called Posen. And uh, there was once a certain person that they had a cellar. And what, once a person went into the cellar, he just dropped dead. And they, they started seeing funny things happen with the cellar. And after two years after this death, there was certain demons were kept on coming back to this certain cellar and it was uh, 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 not a cellar with an S, with a C, right? So it was certain like a, like a basement type of thing. And they began to frequent it. And when people that lived there, what they started realizing is that if let's say they prepare food on the stove, when they came to change the food, they realized that it was uh, filled with dirt and the food was gone. And then they started seeing that uh, that uh, you know that things were like, like moving in the house. And they saw it moving. They started, you know, like... Uh, Pictures started falling down, lamps started getting pushed over, things were getting moved around the house in front of them, and they couldn't do it anymore. They're the owners of the house, so they started they're going to leave the house. And because uh, eventually these demons kept on wandering throughout the entire house. Be, originally it was just like this basement, the cellar, and eventually they just went everywhere, dro drove the people out of the house. And uh, so they, people moved elsewhere, and they hit this, and they still own this house. What are they going to do with this house? So they decided they're going to go and uh, they start try to bring some Gentile uh, professional people that could get rid of this whatever spirits were going out. But it was no avail. It didn't help anything. So they came. Uh, uh, the, there was a certain rabbi of the name of Rabbi Yol Baal Shem. And he was brought to the house, and he bound them, these demons, by oath. He used certain mystical names, and he bound them by oath, you know, that, uh, that they're not allowed to take, you know, what, what are they doing over here? They're not allowed to take, uh, you know, they're not allowed to live in, in places that are habited, right? These, 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 you know, in the forest, that's where they belong, but they don't belong in people's houses. How did you get permission to go in here? So the spirits actually answered him back, and they said back, this is rightfully ours, and we'll go to Adin Do you want to take us to court? We'll go to court. He says, let us take us to court, because this is legally our, our house. So they agreed on a court date. They agreed on a court date two days later. And um, two days later, they began the court, and suddenly the, they heard a voice. A voice was speaking to them without a form. It was coming from somewhere. They didn't see any body, any person, but a voice was coming through them. And, it, and the voice explained the story as follows. And he says, um, he says that this house formerly belonged to a certain man, and they named this man. And he used to have relations with a cer certain female demon. And he you know, brought into the world certain children from this female demon. And he also had children from this human wife as well. He was married and he had this society of fear. And this person was very, very much in love with this demon. And so much to the point, it says the Kaveh that his soul was bound with her whole soul. They were together. And uh, sometimes he was even obligated to stop his prayers and, and leave the synagogue in order to fulfill the wishes of this demon. And he said one time he was leading a seda on Pesach night, and the first night of Passover. And suddenly, he just get up, get up from the seda and he left the house. So his wife was like, what's going on? You know, he didn't say a word and he just left. So his wife started to follow him. Where is he going? And he realized he went into a certain uh, shed. And there was a crack in the shed. And she peeked in to see what he's doing. And she peeked, in, she peeked in there. And she saw that there was a luxurious room. Outside looked like garbage. And inside it was a luxurious room that was filled with gold and silver. And there was, bread, uh, there was a bed over there with a covering. It looked extremely, extremely fancy, expensive, and beautiful. And in there she saw a beautiful woman. Right, a beautiful woman that wasn't really clothed. And she saw this woman embrace her husband. And, you know, and, you know this woman, this, this, his wife, got really scared, and she ran home. And her husband returned about a half hour later, and she didn't say a word. They finished whatever they were doing, and they went to sleep. The next day, this woman ran to the rabbi. And she went to the rabbi. The rabbi was, uh, it came out to the rabbi, Rav Sheftel, which was the son of the Shlach, a Kodesh. So he went over to him, and the, and, uh, the rabbi ordered this person to come. And he says, it's true. Are you having you know, some sort of outside type of uh, you know, fear? And he admitted, he confessed to it. So the rabbi went and wrote him an amulet. And in the amulet, he contained you know, certain holy names, which basically prevented the demon from getting close to him. And uh, that's, how, that's how it was. For the rest of the days, he wouldn't, uh, you know, he wouldn't be associated with this demon. When he was dying on his deathbed, this demon returned to him. And she came and she started crying to him. He says, how do you do this? How do you leave me? You know, we have children. We have this. How are you going to just leave me with nothing? And she started, you know, hugging him and kissing him and, you know, uh, you know trying to, to uh, get him to give her something. So he says, he says he grants her and, and her portion, the, uh, his estate. He had a certain estate and he gives it to her. And uh, years went by after he died and the Poland was immersed in a war. 
right? And this war lasted from the Jewish again, calendar year from 5408 to 5418 for 10 years. And after the war, all of this person's children were killed, which means nobody was left to inherit this house that they, you know, and uh, so they went and the spirits started going and, and lived in that house. And so this house is rightfully ours. Our father owned this, uh, owned this house. All his human stock died. So we, now this belongs to rightfully ours. So the current owner said, listen, we, we paid full price for this house. You know, it's not, we, we, bought, we bought this house. So the, they went over to the rabbi. This was brought up to the rabbi. And the rabbi um, Paskin, he, he uh, his, his finalized that the, the case was that the spirits have no case. He says, spirits are not allowed to live in the habited areas. Doesn't matter who gave it to you and where did you get it from. You are not allowed to be over here. And he banished them to the to the to the to the outskirts of the of the town, uh, of which was the forest, and uh, and he says not only are you not allowed to go back into the house, you're not allowed to go back into the cellar, you're not allowed to go back there at all, and he and he bound them by oath, right, as only Kabbalists is able to do it, that they wish they were never allowed to return. And the Kabbalah Yashar says, he brings down, he says, for here you see how much a person has to distance himself from immorality. He says, people think, okay, have some fun. You never know what's going on, right? There are so many things out there. This world is a crazy, twisted world, and sometimes it's more than crazy, twisted. And it's something that you do not want to get involved with at all. He says, a person says the Kabbalah Yashar has to go and very distance himself as far as possible, put gates and gates and gates and gates and gates, so that he wouldn't, God forbid, ever get close to such a situation. This guy, he knew it was a... He knew, he knew it was a... He knew, was a, he knew she was, yeah. He, he thought she was a... No, 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 he knew that she was not... Uh, uh, human, and he still because he he con when the rabbi confronted him, he said, you know, it, it's true, it's true. So a person has to be very careful, right? The, 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 also, there's a you know good thing why we actually uh, extended this because um, what's the purpose of speaking about this, right? Why do we need to know about demons, right? Why do I, we I you know if if there's no purpose, why do I waste an hour of your time, or how whichever long we were here? For about this information, but rather I find this information very helpful. There are many people think that this world is this world and that's it. And the answer is there's a lot more to this world that you don't even know. There's so much going on in the world over here. There's so much things that are flying. There's so many spirits. There's so many demons. There's who knows what's going on over here in this world. Forget about the next world. And people are here, you know, doing their sins, driving on Shabbat like nothing is happening. The person has to wake up and be, you know, start start realizing there's, it's very dangerous out there if you don't listen to God, right? And not it's not like a it's not like a threat. It's a Torah says. It says in If you follow my ways. Tons of blessing. You don't follow my ways, there's a list of curses. It's as simple as that. Reward and punishment. It's as simple. It's one of the 13 principles of faith. Right? There's reward and punishment in this world. People have to take, in, take in this as mind. There are, there, are, there are people that have, not sure if they should do Shabbat, they should start keeping Shabbat. There's no clearer things than when they, when we, they realize on how much stuff is going out on there. Right? Just think about it. When you walk home tonight, Think about all the things that are following you, right? Think about it. It's good. It's good to think about all these things. It's crazy. You might not sleep at night, but it'll wake you up to what's really out there. Right, to, to the fact, and you know what happens in the next world when you get out there? There's no, you know, there's no like uh, pretending not to see anything, right? Everything is out there in the open. A person has to take this into consideration, take this into you know, personal account that uh, your person has to do tshuva before it's too late. You don't want to come on a deathbed and then suddenly some old girlfriend comes over to you and says, hey, by the way, I was never a real stock. <laughs> Guess what? You're mine, you know? A person should stay as far away as possible from all these sins, especially the sexual sins and any other sins that uh, could, could lead to that. Any other questions? Okay.